It's still the Olympic break. A week from now, we will be back racing in Richmond. But today, I thought I'd go over a couple of drivers who have overperformed and some that have underperformed. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. We've had a very interesting season so far for the NASCAR Cup Series. We're approaching the playoffs and there's been a couple of drivers who have been really strong this season surprisingly and some that have, let's be honest, have been pretty awful this season. So what I'm going to do here today is go over Three drivers I feel like who have overperformed and three that have clearly underperformed. Let's go through the bad news first as we're going to go through three drivers who I feel like who have underperformed and the first one I'm going to name is Ross Chastain. If you look at the stat sheet overall Chastain's had a decent season but with how strong he's been these last couple years I think there's been some really high expectations for Ross, especially with getting that Bush sponsorship. Like I said, overall he's had a decent season, but he's definitely not living up to the hype and the expectations that a lot of us have for Chastain when it comes to his speed. His average finish this season is 14.9, not too bad per se. Seven top tens, pretty good, but only two top fives, and I think that's probably the big surprise here. Ross Chastain is also one of those drivers that's actually fighting for one of those last couple of playoff spots because he's yet to win this season. He's right there near the bubble at the moment. It's going to be really close to see if he makes the playoffs. Now these other two drivers are clearly struggling and are in must-win territory if they want to make the playoffs. I'm going to start with probably the biggest struggle of the bunch and that is Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon, I wouldn't consider him to be one of the 10 best drivers in the Cup Series, maybe not even top 15, but this season has probably been his worst season of his career. He's currently 32nd in points. He has only two top 10s on the whole year and no top fives. Right now, Austin Dillon is almost averaging a 25th place finish at a 24.5. The driver of the number three has had a very tough time, and I think that's why you've seen even more this season compared to last season of these retirement rumors from Austin Dillon. Over the last two or three weeks, I'd say I've seen a little bit more speed out of Austin Dillon, but he needs to get those finishes and get back into a decent points position because he's one of the last drivers out of full-time drivers in points. And the last underperformer, I think every single one of you know which driver I'm going to say. My favorite driver, Kyle Busch. RCR as a whole has struggled on the cup side of things all season long. It's been horrible for, for that team. Austin Dillon's having probably the worst season of his career, as Kyle Busch is probably having the worst season of his as well. Rowdy almost averaging a 20th place finish right now at a 19.7. And very uncharacteristically, only has two top fives to go with his six top tens. Let's not beat around the bush here. It's been an awful year for Kyle Busch and RCR. They've pretty much struggled anywhere they go. It seems like the only tracks where Kyle Busch has decent speed and pace is the super speedways. It seems like their super speedway program is pretty strong. And on the road courses, Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon, they're decent road course racers, but they've been one of the top performers on road courses. I see him consistently in the top 10, top 15 throughout the race at the road courses. And it seems like everywhere else on the schedule, they seem to really struggle, especially the short tracks. I think we have a couple of races coming up where I can see Kyle Busch potentially getting a victory, getting his season back on track. But like I said at the opening, he, he's in a must-win. He is in a must-win position if he wants to make the playoffs this year. All right, now on to the brighter side of things. Our three overperformers. First driver I'm going to name here is actually 
moving on to Joe Gibbs Racing to take over for Martin Truex next season, and that is Chase Briscoe. I think we all knew coming into this season, with this being the last season on the contract with Ford, them not being a tier one OEM, they don't get that tier one OEM support anymore. It's their tier two now. And then, and then after the news about Stuart Haas closing their doors and then essentially reopening them next year as the Haas factory team, it's been a very difficult time for Stuart Haas racing. In the last couple of years, it's been no secret. They've been pretty awful other than Kevin Harvick. And then with Harvick leaving, they needed a new leader. And that leader for most of this season, I'd say, would be Chase Briscoe. I was really debating between Briscoe and Gregson. Gregson had a really strong front half of the season the last couple of weeks. I'd say he's lagged back a little bit while Briscoe has picked it up. And Josh Berry has looked very strong the last couple of months as well. But I mainly put Briscoe on here because he is in a decent position to make the playoffs. He can actually still make it on points. He's not in a must-win scenario. It'd be better. It'd be a lot better if he wins, but he's not in a must-win scenario. Chase Briscoe with two top fives, six top tens, averaging a 17.5 finish. He's been the strong point at Stuart Haas as of late, and he has a good shot at making the playoffs, and everything is looking good for Briscoe. Like I say, he's going to Gibbs next year. This is a great part in his career. I saw a lot of success out of him. And Xfinity he won a bunch of races. And ever since he's gotten to Cup, he's struggled a little bit. But it looks like this season, he's really he's really finally found his footing. Now, the next driver I'm going to name is actually, I think some people would be surprised, is outperforming his teammate over at Front Row Motorsports. And that is Todd Gilliland. Todd Gilliland actually is 20th in points, while his teammate, Michael McDowell, who's been the leader of that team for quite a long time, is 21st in points. We've seen some pretty strong runs from Gilliland. I remember at Atlanta, I think it was at Atlanta earlier on in the year, was actually mixing it up for the win throughout the day. And overall, over these last two seasons, I don't think there's a single driver in the Cup Series I've seen more improvement out of than Todd Gilliland. And I'm very excited to see what he can do next season because it sounds like Front Row is going to be even stronger next year than they are right now. Gillen with four top tens. Unfortunately, has not gotten a top five. I'm surprised I was surprised to see that because of how well he's ran this season. Gillen is also though in a must-win position if he wants to make the playoffs. He's roughly around where Kyle Bush is in points, a little bit behind him. Todd Gillen, like some others, is in must-win position to make the playoffs. But honestly, if Gillen doesn't make the playoffs, that doesn't make his season not a success. This has been a great season from Todd Gillen, and I expect him to get even stronger next season. And then my next overperformer for me, I don't know if everybody will agree with it, but my overperformer so far this season is Justin Haley. Justin Haley has had a great season. Honestly, if you look at the stats, it's like, all right, it's not... It's not that great of a season. He has two top 10s, an average finish of 22.7. But look at the car he's getting in. Rick Ware Racing undoubtedly has been the worst full-time ride over the last couple of years. You had Live Fast, who was right there with him throughout some of that. But on a consistent basis, the team that's usually at the back of the pack is those Rick Ware Racing cars. Well, this season, we've seen a dramatic improvement over there at Rick Ware Racing. The 15 is even running somewhat well at times with Grala or even Cody Ware in the car. But Justin Haley, over the last maybe three months at this point, two months, something like that, I've consistently, every single week, see him running in the top 20, if not the top 15, throughout the day. Overall, just been very impressed by Haley. And if that, that team needs to just get more used to running in the front half, of the field. Once that 51 team gets more used to running in the front half of the field, I could really see the finishes begin to develop because then the crew chief and the pit crew and the driver will all really figure out what the correct strategy is and the way to approach the end of these races. I really think that's the only 
difference maker between him having better finishes than what he's been getting. But let me know down below, is there any other overperformers and underperformers that you feel like I missed on this list? Uh, there was a couple of drivers I was thinking about for overperformer. I was thinking about Carson Hosevar, a couple others, underperformer, Zane Smith, I was kind of thinking. But give me your thoughts down below. What do you think of the overperformers and underperformers? Give me some that you think. Who do you think has really just outperformed any sort of expectation we've had for them and who's been just flat out a disappointment this season? Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.